Last week, we looked at momentum. In the absence of external forces, momentum is conserved. An object at rest tends to stay at rest. An object in motion tends to remain in motion. But when there is an external force, the force is proportional to the change in momentum. The force induces a change in momentum, and the two are proportional to each other. Today's exercise looks at this situation. The basic setup will be that I will start with a momentum of zero. My mass times my initial velocity will be zero. And over a three meter distance, I will be accelerated by a rope pulling me to a final velocity VF. And so I'll have my final momentum minus my initial momentum divided by the time over which that change in momentum occurred. Remember, the force is proportional to the change in the momentum, and change happens over time. So, in the bottom of the whiteboard, you'll see that I've got the mass times the velocity final minus the mass times the velocity initial divided by the change over which that time occurs. A lot of measurements have to be made, but when I'm done with the measurements, I'll be able to calculate my final momentum, and that should be proportional to the force applied to the rope that is pulling me from rest to a later speed. My momentum is going to change across a distance of three meters, starting at zero meters and continuing out for three meters beyond, as marked by chalk on the sidewalk. Timers will determine how long it took me to change momentum across that three meters. The setup is somewhat complex. The rope will be set to pull at a constant force of 20 newtons. That's what I'm directing him to do there. To pull with a constant force. There's a spring scale attached to the end of the rope. And that's what he'll use to determine that I'm being accelerated at 20 newtons. My momentum will change during this stretch here, and timers will determine how long that occurs. At the end of the three meters, I'll be dropping the rope. Then people will determine my final velocity so they can calculate my final momentum. This is a worksheet that we used with blanks. Here at the upper right, you can see that my starting velocity was zero meters per second, number one. Calculation number two, the momentum at the start, which is my mass, about 70 kilograms, times my starting velocity of zero, is zero. I started with a momentum of zero. In number three, there was a 4.53 second period of time across which my momentum changed. My momentum changed across a 4.53 second frame of time. During that time, I reached a final velocity, number four, of 1.03 meters per second. So if you take the 70 times the 1.03 in number five, you'll get that I had a final momentum of 72 kilogram meters per second. That was my final momentum. I started with zero, and I ended with a momentum of 72. This happened during 4.53 seconds. So in part six, I can take my moment, my change in momentum, and divide by my change in time. And that will give me 72 kilogram meters per second divided by 4.53 seconds yields 16 newtons. Newtons are kilogram meters per second squared. Newtons are a measure of force. Now I was being pulled by a force of 20 newtons, Calculations yield 16 newtons. They are not exactly equal. There are some factors to be considered, like there's some loss to frictional forces, heat, a few other factors, and there's some difficulties in simply pulling the spring scale at a 20 newton force. But within the realm of error, within the bounds of error for this sort of experiment, my change in my momentum divided by the time yielded a 16 newton measurement.
and the force that was being applied, pulled, was 20 newtons. The force is roughly equivalent to the change in momentum. This will turn out to be Newton's second law, that force is proportional to the change in momentum with respect to time. We'll learn to cast it in a slightly different set of variables later, but that was how Newton saw it. He saw his first law as being that momentum is conserved when there are no external forces, and thus an object at rest tends to remain at rest, and an object in motion tends to remain in motion provided there are no external forces. That was his first law. His second law was that the change in momentum is proportional to the force, and the point of this demonstration was to show that that is indeed true. we will wrap this up with a, a brief look at some of the equipment used and prep preparational measurements that had to be made to do this particular demonstration. You will need a scale to weigh your own mass along with the mass of the ripstick. You must take both into account. That's my mass with the ripstick mass. You'll also need rope. You'll need some measuring equipment, some spring scales, some chalk. These are some other pieces of equipment that you'll need to uh, get this done. It's also going to take a good number of people, people working the spring scale, a lot of different timers, timing the different segments. The worksheet can help you see where you have to have timers and what you're trying to time. Remember, there's a speed trap at the end that has to be uh, taken into account. And so that speed trap uh, is where you measure your final velocity. So you've got people measuring the first three meters where your momentum is changing, and you have people measuring that two meter speed trap or whatever your length speed trap is to get your speed coming off the, the, the uh, ripstick ride. At that point, I've released the rope, and I'm just trying to conserve my velocity so they can get a reading on my final velocity to get my final momentum. 